I'm back, baby. You can't keep me away forever. You hear that, Brian? This chair is mine. It's mine. You guys gotta clap after I say it's mine. Mine, all right. I mean, that was the wrong word. Okay. <laughs> what happened? Was it me? No, no, it was just oh, okay. What was the problem? Just clap after I say it's mine. Everybody clap. <laughs> Not yet. I'll tell you. Oh. Getting right. clap at <laughs> Never fails to screw up on the first, like. Five, four, three. I'm back, baby. You can't keep me away forever. You hear that, Brian? This chair here, it's mine. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of the Owning Out the Movie Show. Let's meet our panel. We got Michael B. Jordan's biggest fan, Joey T. How you doing, guys? Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. Okay. Shorts, That's good. Good job. Great job. All right. All right. Good. Next up is the man with the best mustache. But wait, it's gone. Ben, did it fall off? I screwed up the trimming. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, okay, come back to me, thank you. Uh, <laughs> next up, the man who can't work a TV, Dan Marks. <laughs> yes, I don't know how to work a TV. I also can't grow a mustache, so there's that. You have one, a little bit. It's not like, it's it's like, all right, whatever. Now we have story. talked a lot about the Field Paradox, so why stop now? It was revealed that this week that the film brought in 2.8 million U.S. viewers in its first three days, which rose to 5 million view views in seven days for a bit of comparison. Bright brought in 11 million views in three days, assuming the average ticket price of $10. Uh, Clearfield Paradox at opening weekend of about uh, $28 million. Joey, should Netflix be happy with these numbers of Cloverfield Paradox? Well, I would be happy with those numbers. Uh, but I would be too. I'm not Netflix. Um, <laughs> Netflix is huge. They should be pumping out the best content we've ever seen. They, have, they show the best writers and best crew that they, out of anybody. Um, so no, they should honestly not be happy. Uh, it's a good number if it's a small company. Um, it's a good number in general, but you're not looking at numbers that compare to these blockbuster movies that we've seen. Mm. Lately, good points so. here. Mm. Keep on going, I like not this. Really a, <laughs> not really a great opening weekend, but the fact that they did drop it in, uh, on, the Super Bowl commercial, on the Super Bowl commercial time, um, a huge slot, millions of viewers, it should have had a bigger impact. Mm. Um, millions of people are watching, but not everybody saw it, and me being one of them. <laughs> oh, you didn't see it? <laughs> did not I see Cloverfield Lane. I did not. not, not feel, uh, did you, any of you guys see it? No. Yeah, you saw it. it? How was it? Uh, pretty awful. <laughs> <laughs> What's so bad about it? Uh, nothing happens. It's just probably the most boring movie I've ever seen. You're like. It was actually like just dreadful. Are you upset that you wasted all that time? No, nah, it was pretty short. It was only like an hour and a half. <laughs> but like, I love the first two. So I was expecting a, you know, the satisfying trilogy. Did it? Did it set up? Did it end? Did, did it end the series? Or, or is it leaving? No, it like, it? just I don't know. It made me more confused than I wanted to be. Now the bigger question is: Do you guys actually pay for Netflix? Yes. Yeah. You guys all pay for Netflix? Why well, you guys are some good people? I steal it. All right, <laughs> but let's let's go to our next story over here. Let's see. Uh, next up is Ellen John and Beyonce are working on a new song for the live action Lion King movie. The film is being directed by Jon Favreau, who most recently directed the action book, the action Jungle Book movie. Dan, are you excited for the new song for the Lion King? I am very excited. How excited? Really excited. Really excited. Really, really, really excited. Why are you so excited? Because it's the Lion King. Yes. It's live action. Yes. It's not a cartoon. Yes. <laughs> should be good. You think it should be good? It's going to be good. So you think it's, about it? it's gonna be like Iron Man. You think it's gonna be as good as Iron Same Man? Same director. That doesn't so mean is anything. the Jungle Book. Iron Man make. is gonna make a cameo. Did you see Jungle Book? No. Well, do you yeah, think I that was good? Yes. Did you see Jungle Book? Yeah. Was it good? Not as good as the original. I didn't think so. So how, how do you guys feel about I I'm excited. Uh, my boy Donald Glover's in it again. Oh, he's your so, boy, you know him? Uh, I wish. <laughs> Go to parties every weekend with him. Now I'm I'm kinda hoping that he also does a song too. I'm very excited about the Beyonce, Elton John. Uh, I collaboration. Love oh yeah, Kingsman. Oh my God, Kingsman I love that. I love that. His favorite movie. 
it's a great movie. Keep, keep on going. And uh, yeah, especially since uh, Elton John's no longer touring after this last tour, I think it'll be good to see, hear some like new music from him, especially with Beyonce, who is adored by a lot of people, probably the same amount of people that watch Cloverfield Paradox, if not more. Uh, I think probably more. Yeah, definitely more. But uh, yeah, I'm very excited, especially with like the cast and James Earl Jones ref returning as Mufasa. Mufasa. Like, that's very exciting. What's your me. favorite Ellen John song? Uh, Saturday Night's Night for Fighting. Oh, what about Beyonce? I'm not a big fan of Beyonce, oh, but on, probably ladies, cr probably Crazy in Love with Jay Z, just because I like. How's it go? I I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me with the camera. How's it go? Let me hear it. <laughs> Gonna, that's that's not all. Alright, no, okay. uh, you guys are bad. Uh, <laughs> Joey, well, how do you feel about this Lion um, King thing? Well, I loved the new Jungle Book. I thought the live action uh, CGI kind of stuff worked out really well. Okay. It was cool, if anything. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty excited, especially with like, like you said, Donald Glover mm. being in it. Um, Beyonce, they're gonna recreate the music insanely well. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped for that. Now, what if it's bad? What, what if the whole thing is bad? Would I'll you just be, be disappointed? disappointed? Well, it's, it's a yeah. classic. It's just. It can't be bad. It has to be good. Uh, <laughs> have you ever seen it on Broadway? I have, yeah. like, twice. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Have you guys seen it? Yeah, you, you don't go see Broadway I've shows. Seen, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I liked it. I saw it a couple yeah, times. It I think really it was good. good. But you know what? Who cares? I'm moving on to the next <laughs> story. All right, here we go. During the Olympics this week, the very first trailer for The Incredibles 2 was unveiled. Ben, should mm. we be excited for this incredible trailer? Ha! Pun. Uh, Get it? Let's go. Let me hear your stuff. Got you. Uh, I, I'm pretty excited because it's going to show like a whole new uh, avenue of superheroes because you got Elastigirl going off being a superhero now instead of the the well, first one where Mr. Incredible was off doing the superhero gig. And now you're just kind of seeing Mr. Incredible trying to be a stay-at-home dad, trying to focus all these kids with the superpower, especially Jack-Jack, who I still can't say specifically what his superpower is. He's all of them. Yeah, he has all of the above. That's pretty much it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's exciting. Got the entire cast back. I'm excited to see more Edna Mode, yeah, What about Samuel Jackson? Oh What's yeah, Frozone. Frozone. Mr. Freeze. Mr. Fro Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. What's his name? Fro Fro Frozone. Frozone. I like to see we get yelled at by his wife. <laughs> Where is my, my super suit? Where is my super suit? Now, Dan, how do you feel about The Incredibles 2? Did you like Incredibles 1 before you answered it? Did you like love, Incredibles 1? Love Incredibles loved 1. It. I just wanted to know where super push. suit is. <laughs> We found well, he it. He did find it. He yeah. found it. Where was it, though? Is it the closet? <laughs> oh, why was it in the closet? Oh, my God. Because she is the greatest okay, good okay. he's yeah, no, ever going to get. Can you answer this my question? Thank Incredibles 2, the teaser was great. I think it's going to be awesome. I thought Finding Dory was great. So I think Disney has a, uh, a good track record of making really good sequels. Um, all the Toy Story sequels, Toy Story 3, I thought was really good. So, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited for it. Excited for it? Excited How for it, How about you, yeah. Joey? I love the Incredibles. I'm sure we all have. All, all of mm. the Incredibles. Um, oh, it was when we were uh, growing up. <laughs> yeah, um, Pixar doesn't really disappoint me much. So I'm definitely really excited to see uh, Mr. Incredibles, you know, super dad side. Um, but a lot of like the trailers point to Elastigirl being like back in her um, vintage suit. And yeah. like mm. back in her like The white years. and blue I think it is, right? Yeah, because the whole, the whole story is driven by this guy who wants to bring superheroes back, back into yeah. like back into the public eye. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of excited for to see how like that works out with the public and now. Uh, how do you normal. feel if little kids are going to to, to this movie? Good. Are you like you don't no you don't belong here because you weren't you see the first one you weren't this is our movie? No, that's stupid. I'm just asking. That's just I read an article today about it. It's a it. Pixar movie. You know, kids are allowed to watch it. They don't need to see the first one. They're, it's just entertainment. Well, ben, like, what are your thoughts on Joey? I don't hear Joey. How dare one. you? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I okay. guess I guess my basic philosophy for this one is my philosophy for children in general with movies there's a certain age if they can't behave themselves in public don't bring them to a theater oh yeah i didn't think about that how mad could it be if you sit next to a little kid little kid yeah crying. it was literally when i was watching black panther i just hear screaming at really? random points i was like no stop it so what age do you think kids should be allowed to watch i think once they enter kindergarten it should be yeah like six yeah, six five six around that time i think they shouldn't go i think they, they should wait for the teachers to get a dvd of it and show it in class when they when they're out for one day. You can't take yeah. away his right to be when they used to throw it. Oh, it's the best day of my life, honestly. That was the best day. Take away a child's yeah, right. Don't tell me yeah. what to do. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna move on to the next story. Our last bit of news uh, this week, which broke late Friday, Transformers is getting rebooted after the after the upcoming Bumblebee movie. The series will be starting from scratch. There will there are no details as to what the reboot will look like, who will write, direct, or star in it. 
but it has been reported that Hasbro will have a greater influence of the films, thank God, and will spend about $100 million on the film and TV content in 2018. Hopefully this will mean no more Michael Bay. I think this news is... Great. Wonderful. No Michael Bay sounds fantastic. You guys not like Boy. Michael Bay? No. <laughs> no. You guys he had like his any chance multiple times. He had his chance multiple times. Transformers every 1 time. is a guilty pleasure. What, explain. It's, just, it's not like the worst movie. Transformers <laughs> 1 is, is well done. <laughs> and it, it is. And it, uh, they, you know, kind of just kept pumping too many out and they kind of lost their, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but definitely a reboot is a good second chance because I definitely want to see more Bumblebee's origin. Um, but also, like, you know, they had they kind of already rebooted the character yeah. in a sense. Yeah. Cause, like Shia LaBeouf was there, then he just wasn't. I kind of don't want to see. Like, I'm tired <laughs> and they, of reboots. Yeah, and they got new Transformers at some they point. They do. Yeah, yeah, because they had the Samurai it's Transformer the toys. and the John Goodman Transformer. John but Hasbro Goodman being a big part of this is pretty big. I mean, I I mean they were part like, of the first one too. They're like trying to do their whole like G.I. Joe, Transformers. And yeah, look how they end up thing. with G.I. Joe. Well, no, they're yeah. rebooting G.I. Joe. Are they really? Well, yeah. we're not talking about G.I. We're talking about Transformers. <laughs> Hasbro, bro. I think once bro. Megan Fox bro, bro. got kicked off, it was over. Because that was the, she was the best part of Transformers 1. Megan Fox? Yeah. Yeah, she was in like Transformers 1 and like half of 2, right? Yeah, and then, mm. and then she like cursed out Michael Bay. And Michael Bay was like, oh, see you later. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I'm your boss. You can't do that. Get out here. How do you feel about it, Ben? How do you feel about the Transformers? Again, as I said before, Michael Bay not doing stuff is always a good idea. Um, uh, I guess I'm a little excited for Bumblebee because he's probably like the biggest, uh, despite Optimus Prime being the leader, he, Bumblebee's like the main like merchandising robot and people look forward to Bumblebee more than other uh, Autobots or Decepticons, I guess. Now, what happens if they really mess up Bumblebee? Well, then I'm just... It's its the same thing with Aquaman. If they mess it up, I'm done with the entire just franchise. Yeah. I'm just... I'm not going to hold out hope. What 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 car is he, Bum Bum Bumblebee? It's a Camaro. I think he's making yeah. a Ford Camaro. Fusion Camaro. or something. Ford. Like a really That'd basic cool. car. <laughs> yeah, like, I think a all Honda Civic just rolling along. just be basic cars. And people be like, yo, I have that car. <laughs> that would it's be so cool. cool. The kids would be more like... Yeah, that, like, they'd be like, "Daddy, that Daddy, I don't want a Porsche. I, I want, I want a Chevy. I want a Chevy Cruze." Yeah. <laughs> and like the new Transformer, they like said the first like wheel was like a Transformer. Yeah. Oh yeah, they said in the Mega second one. Megatron used to be like right? a giant gun yeah. or something, and they yeah. just shoot him around. All right, so let's you could be a Transformer. What? You could be a Transformer. How would I be a Transformer? I don't know. Show us how you transform. I mean, okay, you know what? I, it's true. Right. We did that it, in second. All right, I want to. I guess we'll have to keep on talking about this a little bit more. <laughs> Who's your favorite Transformer, Ben? Uh, uh, Optimus Prime. I always got why? a good leader. He's a semi truck. You ever been in a semi truck? Yeah, they're very uncomfortable. Yeah, they are. <laughs> That's why he's mad all the time. But his voice is also the same voice guy who voiced Winnie the Pooh. Are you serious? Yeah. So Winnie the Pooh is essentially. I think so. Jim Cummings. I think. How do you know that? I. Are, I, you, are you an IMDb nerd? IMDb. Yeah. I am what? IMDb. Okay. Yeah, internet movie. All right. You know what? We're gonna. <laughs> we're gonna. I, after after that, we'll be right back after this commercial break. We have a morning, big problem. Happens, actually, Jim Cummings, I'm pretty help. sure I'm like it's happening on college campuses, at bars, at parties, even in high schools. It's happening to our sisters and our daughters, our wives and our friends. It's called sexual assault, and it has to stop. We have to stop it. So listen up. If she doesn't consent, or if she can't consent, it's rape, it's assault. It's a crime. It's wrong. If I saw it happening and I was taught, you have to do something about it. If I saw it happening, I speak up. If I saw it happening, I'd never blame her. I'd help her. Because I don't want to be a part of the problem. I want to be a part of the solution. We need all of you to be part of the solution. This is about respect. It's about responsibility. It's up to all of us to put an end to sexual assault. And that starts with you. Because one is too many. Welcome back. Now the time has come to test our panel and their movie knowledge. In honor of Black Panther, all trivia this week is, is going to be, you guessed it, Marvel movie trivia. Yeah. Oh my God. Let's do Marvel this. Time. Are you guys ready? <laughs> okay. First question. Who directed the first Iron Man film? Is it... Yes. John Favreau. That is correct. You get a point. Dang. All right. Buzzer system? Okay. No, no. Just, just raise your hand. <laughs> All just right. say, just say, just raise no, your hand impressive. so I can see it. I mean, do you want it? I don't think it's going to work. Just, just raise your hand. Raise All your right. hand. All right. Who directed the first Captain America film? 
Is it A, John Favreau, B, Josh Whedon, C, Joe Johnston, or D, Kenneth Baraga? What? And C, the third one. You'd be correct. Yes. That's a good job. We got one, one, zero. You're doing pretty right, bad. Yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, <laughs> three questions so Number far. three. <laughs> Who played Eric? How do you say that? Don't look at the answer, though. Se what is that? What? What, what name Eric is that? Eric Selvage. Selvage in oh, MCU. I oh, I got you. You know it? Aaron Selvig. Yeah. Selvig. Who played Eric's him? You want, do you want the, uh, do the you want options? Yes, please. The yeah. options? Okay. A. Bill Syndergaard. <laughs> B. Alexander Skygaard. C. Stellan Snygaard. <laughs> D. Gustav Snygaard. What kind of <laughs> answers are these? <laughs> what is it? What? A. A. Bill? Yeah. yeah. Not Bill. Damn. I knew it was one Wrong. of the Scar Yes. <laughs> C. You are right. How do you say it? Skarsgård. Skarsnard. Stellan Skarsnard. Correct. All right, we got two, one, Where zero. Where is he from? Yeah, who is he? Yeah, I don't know. He? Uh, he's in Thor. These. He's the doctor dude. Who is he? The doctor dude in Thor. Yeah. He, Remember he, he went crazy in the dark world? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay, exactly. number four. Who portrayed Bruce Banner in The Incredible Hulk? Oh, is it A, this. Mark Ruffalo, B, Edward Norton, C, Eric Bana? What? Nope. I saw his hand go first. <laughs> Ed Norton? Ed Norton, that is correct. You it's got actually Edward Norton. Oh, Edward wait a minute. Norton. Maybe it's split in <laughs> Point. Judges. You know, remember remember how many points you have. <laughs> All right, here we go. Question number five. How many times has Robert Downey Jr. played Tony Stark? What? Nine. I'm wrong. <laughs> no, what? Eight. Yes, correct. <laughs> Guys, come on. What was the eighth one? I don't know. It's what it says on my paper, so that's one, what I'm two, going three. with. Yeah, and then Spider Man. All right, think about it. What is it? Let's count down. Ready? First one Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, Avengers, Avengers, Age of Ultron, Spider Man, Homecoming, Civil War. Civil War. Oh, Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hulk. He was Incredible Hulk? Yeah, it was a post credit scene. Oh, uh, okay. Nice. Next door. Let's go to our next question. Uh, what year was the Avengers released? 2012? You'd be <gasps> correct. All right, oh, good yeah. job. All right, good job, good job. Number seven. How many times has Samuel Jackson played Nick Fury? <laughs> guys, can you guys like do it faster? Because you guys do it at the same exact time. What, Dan? Five. Five? What do you say? Four. It's five. <sighs> You'd be wrong. Oh man, you're really bad at this. Uh, number eight. <laughs> Try to count. Who plays out. Loki in the MCU? I'm like, mm -hmm. what? Tom Hiddleston. That is correct. Yeah. Number nine. He's dead. <laughs> yeah. You just dab? Yeah, you did. just dab, bro. Be minus one. I did. That's minus one point. Right, I'm going to say that question again. Who played Loki in the MCU? <laughs> yes. Tom Hiddleston. Yeah, correct. Point. No dabbing on this show. You should at least take a Joey's. No, too bad. <laughs> too bad. Number nine. Spider-Man Homecoming takes place how many years after the Avengers? Yes. Six. Eh. Seven. Eh. Dang. Five. No! <laughs> Like the movie or like in the franchise? Spider-Man Homecoming takes place how many years after the Avengers? The Avengers is 2012. Spider-Man Homecoming takes place eight years later. Spider-Man Homecoming takes place how many years after the Avengers? Eight. Right. Didn't I say that? No. You, you said six. seven. Oh. Or six. And then he went six, seven. He's like, oh, five. <laughs> <laughs> how many MCU films is Jeremy Renner in as Hawkeye? Yeah. Three. Mm -mm. Come on, come on, come on. What? Four. Yes. Come on. Who's in, in Thor, too? I'm sorry, I'm lacking on my trivia. You're today. so bad at this. <laughs> what, what four movies? It's crazy. So Thor? Thor, Avengers. You know, I've never seen any of the Thors. Uh -huh. Sorry. You, you, you only need to see the third one. one. <laughs> you have to look at the requirement to see every single Marvel movie. He yeah, must have cheated on his application. Nope, but that's why <laughs> I'm the host. All right, in what year is Captain America frozen in ice in Captain America, the first Avenger? What? 1941. <laughs> What? 44? No, come on, come 49. On. No, oh my gosh, it's a big jump, yeah. 42? No. 43. Yeah. Oh my god. When did Why 49? 49? Yeah. Four, it ended in 45. Ah, okay, okay so. Uh, tr history's wrong on that one. Gotcha. All right, yeah, <laughs> history <laughs> really runs wrong. Not history guy. Who played Ultron in the Avengers Age of Ultron? You got this. Come on, you got it. I know this, I just James. want you to James. Spader? James Spader? Oh, wait, <laughs> are you, you didn't buzz it. Can Andrew, I see you buzz it? Yes. Spader. Correct, James go. Spader. Good job. All right, Dude. all right. Yeah. yeah. Did you not know that? I thought it was somebody else. You did. Who do you think it was? On James Spader? <laughs> it was Zack Snyder. I think it was Vinny Nelson doing that. Vinny Nelson, of course. R.I.P. So, all right, let's keep on going. What? Okay, okay keep let's going. Go. All right, Dan, this is, this, you're going to get this one right. How many MCU films have been released? What? How many MCU 
films have been no, released. No, no, no. No. Bum, Ni- bum. 19? Bum, bum. Yes. 22? Bum, bum. Dang it. Bum, bum. 20? No, no. <laughs> 21. No. <laughs> Can you guess the number? 23. <laughs> no. What? 25? No! 18! Yes! 18! Oh, wow. Name them all, Dan, for an extra point. <laughs> Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Thor, uh, Thor, The Dark World, Thor... All right, you know, I don't care anymore! <laughs> we'll be right back with our review of Black Panther on the other side of this break. I will get up and walk the dog at 6.30 a.m. I will eat some fruit as part of my breakfast. I will shave. I will clean the sink after I shave. I will be at work by 8 a.m. I will sit through two-hour meetings. I will say yes when you want me to say yes. I will be quiet when you don't want to hear me say no. I will take your call. I will listen to your opinion of my friends. I will listen to your friends' opinions of my friends. I will be civil to your mother. I will put the seat down. I will separate the recycling. I will carry your lip balm. I will watch your vampire TV shows with you. I will take my socks off before getting into bed. I will put my underwear in the basket. And because I do this, I will drive the car I want to drive. Charger, man's last stand. Welcome back. It's time for our review of Black Panther. Now let me start this off. Okay, so... Uh, I like Pink Panther better than Black Panther. <laughs> I thought Black Panther was good. Uh, I don't, I'm not a huge uh, Black. I'm not a huge <laughs> Black Panther fan. I'm not a huge Marvel fan. Um, I think it's the same exact movie. I had. I thought it was a great soundtrack. I think Michael B. Jordan was great in that movie. I don't know. Don't don't you talk any smack about him. He's great. <laughs> um, I liked it. Uh, it was okay. Uh, can you guys make me like it? I Go, th- Joe. I please. think that the the characters. Um, were so well developed. Um, I did not love Michael B. Jordan's performance. <laughs> Sorry, guys. The only um, thing I liked about it was I that. thought Chadwick Bosman was incredible. Uh, Who play, who's that? Uh, Black, Black Panther. T'Challa. Yeah. Yeah. T'Challa. Black Panther. T'Challa. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, it looked beautiful, oh. as most Marvel movies do now. Um, and this, it was just a really well put together movie. And uh, I love Wakanda. I want to go visit there one day. Yeah. Would you really <laughs> want to go visit there? You would no, really want to go visit there? Of course. Why? It's futuristic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the idea of the whole, like, hidden city kind of thing. Um, but I think it's just, like, it was such a, an amazing, like, uh, story, how, how he came to be. I mean, we saw him become Black Panther in the Avengers, in the Civil War. Mm-hmm. Um, and we saw, like, you know, the scene with his dad and everything. And, and it was cool how he was developed as a, a superhero, as a king also. Don't you think it's so cliche, though? Like, it's the same exact movie over and over and over again. Aren't you tired of just seeing it? Just because it had, like, I could say that it was different because it had a great soundtrack and stuff and it looked amazing. But I, I, it's the same exact movie. No, it's not. It is. As what? As every other Marvel movie. Well, he didn't get exposed to, like, radiation or something. Or oh, my dad died. That's it. That and means became, I'm going to be uh, great. And became, like, a... <laughs> had to grow up too fast like Spider-Man. He, it's, like, a tradition that's been living for thousands of years, and it's really, really cool. Ben, can you please? Yeah. I, I liked it. I, it was definitely... It, to me, it lived up to the hype. Uh, what you said about it being kind of the same, I do think the plot line was a little kind of... Boring. A little same, yeah. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of Lion King in some points. Yeah, of course. But Same other stuff. than that, I still liked it. Like, and to go off that, the reason I go is to see the cinematography, the visual effects, to hear like uh, Shuri, right? Zuri? Zuri or Shuri? Shuri. 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 To hear, yeah, Black Panther's sister, like, make all those funny quips and stuff and see her. Oh, come relief character. Oh. And That's she was also, point. like, ridiculously smart. She was Tony Stark level, like, intellect. But yeah, I liked all the characters, uh, especially like the villains uh, with Killmonger and Claw. They were amazing. Um, Chadwick Boseman, of course, was amazing. Uh, and one of the most underappreciated uh, characters in that was uh, crap. What's his name? Ah, uh, Lazy Eye. What? Michael B. Jordan. No, Lazy Eye. The guy from no, Star Wars. The, the shaman yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I think I think that was Zuri. Forrest, Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Forrest that's Whitaker. It. Forrest Whitaker was one of the most underrated actors in the entire movie. Like 
he just, uh, he brought out like emotions in the scenes that he was in because he had like revelation stuff. I'm not gonna go too into it, but he was ridiculously great. All of them were great. Visual effects were stunning, especially when you first see Wakanda when it opens. Uh, it's just amazing. And like you said, I'd also want to go there because it's very futuristic. Maybe you guys could go together. Maybe, right. maybe Dan wants to go with you. Dan, you let, me, let me hear Road the trip. biggest fanboy <laughs> I've ever met of Marvel. Wears a Marvel hat every single day. Let me hear about yeah, Black Panther. Uh, I thought Black Panther was fine. No. <laughs> no, yeah, it was like, it wasn't bad. Um, the acting was very good. Uh, some parts were really, really cheesy. Like what? Like tell me, tell me parts that isn't gonna completely over the top performance and um, part of Claw's performance was like you gotta dial it down by like five. Um, I thought Sherry was really funny, uh, really good character. I thought T'Challa, you know, really interesting character. It was just kind of, it's kind of boring. Right? It was boring. You, you knew it was gonna happen next. Like yeah, it was just kind of the same format of every other movie. It I was will just say like, that it was uh, very very predictable. It is. Yeah. It, it always like, is. I knew every like. Plot point yeah, that's going to happen. Twist, yeah. Right, yeah, right, you're just like, visible. yeah. But that's the way like Marvel is. They, they, it's their same formula over and over again. But except, only they really did like, can we talk about the soundtrack? How oh, great yeah. that soundtrack was? Do you listen to the album? No, I'm talking about the soundtrack. Oh. Well, it, <laughs> Let me hear about the soundtrack. They're both good. <laughs> the, the score of the movie I thought was really good. When they're in Korea, in scenes in South Korea, there's you got K-pop and like the uh, music that comes from you South like Korea. like K-pop? I, I'm not a fan of it personally. It. My friends are. <laughs> And when they're in like Wakanda, you can hear uh, African tribal like vocalization and drums and stuff. I thought that was really cool. And also the uh, album that was produced by Kendrick Lamar has all these songs by Kendrick Lamar. I thought that was really good. You too. Kendrick Lamar fan? Oh yeah. Oh, he's good. Dan, how do you feel about this? Uh, I thought the Kendrick Lamar tracks were great, but I thought the score was awful. Uh, I thought that was probably the reason the movie suffered the most. Uh, such a boring. Gen I know Marvel movies don't have good scores, but this score is just like. Put me to it's just, just there, right? Yeah, it was it, so I, I understand right? that uh -huh. that it's just like any typical action movie with the same same score. How do you how do you feel about it? I think the mix of the modern and traditional music was awesome, and I think it like it really helps with the scene for everything. And I'm not sure if there was a a connection between. I feel like when traditional music was playing, it was when uh, T'Challa was in charge, and then when it started like with um, you no. Know, when you get introduced to Killmonger, it was more of like a modern feel with Kendrick Lamar's album and stuff, and that was really cool because they yeah. blended the two cultures, and it was it was a really well done uh, soundtrack. All right, so now Ben, uh, if you could, if you were directing Black Panther or writing it, uh, what would you change? What's something that you would change? Uh, what I would change would be like very like small Marvel flaws that I've seen in other Marvel movies and like TV what? shows. Well, it'd be kind of spoilery, but uh, like. I'm doing things with villains that I don't approve of, per se, without going into specifics. Um, but that, I would probably change um, the outcome of some scenes. Nothing too crazy, per se, because uh, I, again, I overall liked it. Um, yeah, it's very hard to do this without getting like very spoiler. I mean, you can, you can talk about scenes and they just don't talk about like the, like the outcome of the scenes. Like, what's like... What's something that you would change, say, like, oh, when he does that? Uh, okay. Um, spoil. Well, oh, yeah. like, in the final scene, the battle could have been a little bit more spectacular, I guess. Okay. A little bit It was less dull. I did feel like it was a little, a little less predictable. All the, the climax and then just to that, yeah. there was nothing. Yeah, and also, like, every time, like, Michael Jordan barely defeats the first guy in the ritual. Michael Jordan? Not Michael Jordan. <laughs> My, Michael Chadwick Boseman, sorry. You're talking about him so much because you love him so much. <laughs> it's Michael B. Jordan, first of all, not the basketball sorry. player. But like when Chad in the very beginning of the movie, when Chadwick Boseman is appointed king, he's got to do the ritual or whatever. He barely defeats the gorilla guy, and now he's like, "Oh, I can take on Michael B. Jordan," and he like continues to do this. But I don't know. I feel like he could have been a little bit more developed as a warrior. What about you, Jeff? If I could change one thing, um, I just I, I kind of disagree with that. I think Chadwick Boseman is a was a fantastic warrior. He was training in like the first scene right when the get go. He is Black Panther. He's watching mm -hmm. crazy. And uh, I wouldn't... It. Yeah. All right, that's it. Well, you know what? <laughs> that does it for us here this week. We'll be back next week with a very special guest, Mr. Personality himself, Nathaniel Bowman!